when states disagree on where their border is, when states contest islands or a maritime zone, when one state considers that another has violated a treaty or other rule of international law, and when the UN or one of its agencies needs an opinion on a legal issue, they can turn to the International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice, or ICJ, has its seat in the Netherlands at the Peace Palace in The Hague. Like the General Assembly and the Security Council, the court is what's known as a principal organ of the United Nations and is the only one not to have its seat in New York. The ICJ is the principal judicial organ of the UN and the world's highest international court. The court has existed since 1946. Its two official languages are English and French. Its founding document, the statute, is an integral part of the Charter of the United Nations. All UN member states, therefore, automatically recognize the existence of the court and can call on its services. The ICJ is the successor of another court, created in 1922 by the League of Nations, the Permanent Court of International Justice. Between 1922 and 1940, the Permanent Court handled around 60 cases. It was dissolved after the Second World War. The ICJ succeeded the Permanent Court on the 18th of April 1946, inheriting not only its statute, but also its jurisprudence and traditions. Like its predecessor, the International Court of Justice has two roles. The first is to decide disputes between states. These are known as contentious cases. The court's second role is to respond to legal questions submitted to it by the General Assembly, the Security Council, and other UN organs or agencies. These cases are known as advisory proceedings. Since the court was established, it's dealt with a large number of cases. The ICJ is not a criminal court. It does not try individuals. Only disputes between states can be submitted to it. The court consists of 15 judges. They're elected for nine years by the General Assembly and the Security Council. Five posts are renewed every three years. Judges may be re-elected. Mr. Mohammed Benuna, Mr. James Richard Crawford, Ms. Joan E. Donoghue, Mr. Kirill Kevorkian and Mr. Patrick Lipton Robinson have been elected to the International Court of Justice for a term of office of nine years, beginning on 6 February 20. The members of the court must all be from a different country. They do not represent their countries. They are independent judges. I solemnly declare that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as judge honorably, faithfully, impartially, and conscientiously. The composition of the court reflects the following geographical balance. Three seats on the bench are occupied by African judges. Two seats are occupied by judges from Latin America and the Caribbean. Three are occupied by Asian judges. 
five by judges from Western Europe and other Western states, and two by judges from Eastern Europe. Although no country is entitled to a seat, in practice the court has always included one judge from each of the five permanent members of the Security Council. If the court does not have a judge of the nationality of the states, parties to a particular case, those states can each choose what's known as a judge ad hoc. These judges can be of any nationality and have exactly the same rights and duties as elected judges. Every three years, the court elects its president and vice president. The president chairs all sittings of the court. He or she directs its work and supervises its administration. Each year, the president presents a report on the activities of the ICJ to the General Assembly in New York. Et du soutien lui apporte. The court is administratively independent. It's the only principal organ of the United Nations that is not assisted by the UN Secretariat. The judges are assisted by a registrar elected by the court for a renewable term of seven years. The registrar is the head of the court secretariat, its registry, whose staff members are recruited from all over the world. The registrar performs judicial, diplomatic and administrative functions. The court's first role is to judge legal disputes between states. These contentious cases represent 80% of its work. In the past, contentious cases have often related to border disputes, maritime delimitation and diplomatic protection. But they also increasingly concern issues such as humanitarian law, environmental law, the use of armed force and the responsibility of states. The court's jurisdiction is general. It may consider any issue of international law. All UN member states are entitled to bring contentious proceedings before the court. Other non-member states can also access the court subject to certain conditions. The court's jurisdiction thus extends throughout the world. Since 1946, a large number of states have appeared before the ICJ in contentious proceedings. States are sovereign. They're free to choose how to resolve their disputes. The court can therefore only hear a case if the states involved have freely consented to having the case referred to it. In most instances, states appear before the court on the basis of an international treaty. Once the court has been seized, the proceedings take place in two phases. First, the states submit their arguments, evidence and submissions in writing. Then their representatives and lawyers deliver oral arguments before the court during hearings. Costa Rica requests the court to dismiss all Nicaragua's claims in this proceeding. Nicaragua requests from the court to A, dismiss and reject the requests and submissions of the Republic of Costa Rica. The court then withdraws to begin its deliberation. Its deliberations are confidential. All questions are decided by a majority of the judges present. On average, the court's deliberations last between four and six months. Each judgment is delivered in the court's two official languages and reproduced in several sealed copies, one of which is sent to each of the states concerned. Judgments are read out at a public sitting. They conclude with an operative part in which the court gives its decision in respect of each of the points at issue. For these reasons, the court won by 14 votes to two, rejects the preliminary objection raised by the... Par ces motifs, 
la cour. 1. Par 14 voix contre 2, rejette l'exception préliminaire soulevée par la République. All judgments of the court are final and without appeal. It is to be noted that by coming before the court of their own volition, states at the same time assume a commitment to comply with its decisions, all of which are binding on the parties. Virtually all the judgments of the court have been implemented. If a state refuses to abide by a decision of the court, the opposing state may have recourse to the Security Council, which may, under Article 94 of the Charter of the United Nations, make recommendations or decide upon measures to be taken to give effect to the judgment. Given the great legal, moral and diplomatic authority with which decisions of the court are invested, it is, however, extremely rare for this to happen. The court's second role is to respond to any legal questions put to it by certain UN organs and agencies. This procedure culminates in advisory opinions. Since 1946, the court has rendered a number of opinions on questions which have sometimes received wide media coverage. The majority of these opinions have been requested by the General Assembly. The advisory opinion issued by the court in 2004 on the legal consequences of the construction of a wall in the occupied Palestinian territory was one of the most high profile in its history. States from across the globe were invited to participate in the proceedings, which lasted just under seven months. The General Assembly and the Security Council should consider what further action is required to bring to an end... Unlike judgments, advisory opinions given by the court are not binding per se. It is for the United Nations organs or specialized agencies having requested an opinion to follow up on them as they see fit. Whatever the case, thanks to the court's legal and moral authority, its opinions carry great weight. Moreover, the consideration given to the court's advisory opinions by states and international organizations in their legal practice fosters the development of international law. Continuing the work started by the Permanent Court of International Justice in 1922, the ICJ's decisions have significance which goes beyond just the states and organizations directly involved in the cases. On very many occasions and on all continents, the court has helped to diffuse crises, to normalize relations between states and to restart deadlock negotiations, either through the settlement of disputes by judicial means or by stating the law in respect of a particular question. As the principal judicial organ of the United Nations, the court is an important cog in the international mechanism for promoting and keeping peace. To that end, the court very regularly hosts visits by heads of state and dignitaries. The court performs its functions with great efficiency. It can make an urgent order in a matter of days or weeks, and give an advisory opinion within a few months. It settles the large majority of the highly complex contentious cases submitted to it in under five years. The court's budget accounts for less than 1% of the regular budget of the United Nations. The court is a judicial institution 
unique in the world. Through its judgments, opinions and orders, it lends its support to the United Nations in achieving its primary purposes, which are to maintain and strengthen international peace and security. Of course, the court cannot by itself prevent states from resorting to force, but recognized by all members of the United Nations, it now more than ever serves them as an invaluable instrument promoting peace that is at their disposal.